We don't have lights, okay? We have been lazy. Um, this is mainly a uh, brain dump to some extent, and as well as trying to find people willing to put in the huge amount of work shipping fetching node will take. So I'm just, I hope that somebody will be, get excited and so on. Um, question for all of you, do you, do you like the current HTTP client in node? Okay. Okay, yeah, that's kind of the feeling of everybody, okay? Um, uh, on top of that, we have uh, a lack of, um, uh, on top of that, there is fetch that is highly popular in, in the browser, in, in, to use in the browser, and uh, that is a completely different paradigm from what it's in Node, and it has a certain type of other limitation. It's also spec so there is a spec that you need to follow if you want to call it fetch. It also sits on the global object, and we also just had a presentation about taking that that is probably not a great idea. So, um, so uh, I just want to talk about, I just do a thing. How's everyone doing this afternoon? Yeah, I know, right? I'm not gonna make these kind of things, I don't want to. Uh, uh, Maybe we might want people, for people joining remotely, to have a laptop. We can get this, I don't know. Probably not a good idea. Okay, so um, there are a bunch of things that um, I, I, I want to, to cover about, about fetch. About fetch might not, there problems of fetch, of bringing fetch in node, and problems that the current HTTP client has in node, so. There are two levels of, uh, of the two, pro two sets of problems, okay? So, um, I'm writing it, I'm sorry, I probably can't read my, you're very far away, so unless you have super, super high sight, you might not read this. So if you want to come closer, whatever, you might want to. So, uh, problems, of, problems of fetch. Uh, fetch is a complex pack that has a bunch of, uh, a bunch of nice properties for the, for the web, okay? And, uh, first of all, it's uh, tile integrated into the caching model of the browsers. Okay, the fetch spec, it's, it's as a full chunk of the spec dedicated to how caching works. So, um, do we do any caching for HTTP? No, no. Um, our current HTTP client do not perform any type of HTTP caching. There's not an HTTP cache anywhere. We are not writing stuff to disk. We are not doing anything related to caching at all. We are leaving that to the ecosystem. And the ecosystem, turns out, is not doing it either. So, uh, you know, there is that. Um, there is a security model. Okay. Like, you know, cars, all the, you know, fantastic stuff for the web. Does it, does it even make sense to have those, you know? You know, that's a, those are open questions, okay? There is uh, the connection pool. And, you know, you know that from a browser, you can make up to four requests down, whatever. It, I don't know if that even changes, but whatever. Uh, uh, four, four parallel requests down to your HTTP server, okay? And there is a concept of HTTP keep alive. And there is a lot of those things in the browser context. Okay? All of this is managed for you. Nice, it's good, right? Uh, in Node.js, we have those through an agent. Now, one of the greatest things that Node made as a change is disabling the global agent because everybody was having a problem with it. <laughs> so um, our experience turns out that having a global connection to and a global set of connections for, you know, calling servers and using Keep Alive is probably a bad idea for Node.js. Yes. Um, so those are, you know, more high-level topics, okay? And I'm just flagging my opinion. If you are different opinion on those topics, you know, um, please let me know. But I, I'm keep, I keep going, okay? Please interrupt me whenever you want. So this is a high-level, okay? And on top of these high-level concerns, we have other things, which is, uh, it's a global. OK, 
okay? And this is uh, problematic because uh, all of these are tied to a global object, okay? Um, so that's also a, a, a concern. We, we could ship not as a global, right? But it's still, if it's still a single function that has attached a single caching and security and connection pool, it's still problematic for, for people. Um, and it implements Watuji streams, which we currently don't support. Okay? It's, we could have those, so that could be simple. Okay? Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not simple, it's just a lot of hard work. Okay? So it's possible, it's just a lot of hard work. I'm not blocking it, by the way. I'm, you know, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, making sure that everything is compatible with those. Um, so these are, uh, and then there is another topic, okay? Now, because it's, it's tied to what we just streams, okay, we have an ecosystem problem. Because, you know, people are, if, you, if I want to send a file over a post using Fetch, now I have an old stream on one side and a Watuji we'll stream on the other side. And now, you know, those two are not open each other. So now we have a little bit stuck. And uh, there is a that consider and now we integrate it with the rest of the uh, node API and the broader and the system in general, which is to have in all streams. Uh, so uh, these are the like stuff for for patch, okay? Uh, I uh, do. Are there any questions? I'm going to move to a slightly different topic. Yeah. That's it, uh, event target versus uh, yes. event meter. Yes. 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 Also that. Hmm? Uh, event target versus event. So the web uses. Uh, yeah, can you dig into what the difference is a little bit? Uh, uh, so the web browsers have a slightly different event model, uh, different naming conventions, different methods to add and remove event listeners, and um, uh, different semantics with concepts like bubbling. And uh, we don't do that at the moment. We have event meter, which has on and off and listener and other methods. So, when, if we do fetch and form, we need to reach that. So, then? Yeah. So, let's divide those in behavior and in API. Okay? Those are two types of categories of suicide and different problems uh, that we need to talk if we want to add fetch. To solve two sets of different problems. Okay. Uh, I want to briefly talk about what uh, about the current issues of uh, HTTP in HTTP request in core. Okay? Um, just because it's HTTP dot request, and because it it's kind of connected to some extent loosely. Okay. Um, how many of you understand how the agent model works in HTTP dot request? One person. <laughs> Two. Probably Anatoly. Anatoly is one. It's. We should explain it to us. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, essentially. Uh, hmm? You good? Uh, so the problem is it has a complex. Agent model. Uh, intention means that you know doing uh, uh, HTTP request at scale in a performant way, it's hard. And uh, I've been trying to optimize this for a while, and it's like you need to configure it. You need to configure the HTTP agent with your set of parameters. So you have a bunch of things where you have the max. Uh, max sockets, okay, and uh, you have um, uh, keep alive, 
and then you have a series of timeouts for all of those okay so it's it gets complicated real quickly especially if you're building a microservices architecture built on top of HTTP you know these techniques might be buried down that's just the way now uh, more popular modules like NodeFetch use this. And NodeFetch, sorry, thanks. Have you put in a, a, a NodeFetch? Have you put in a, a passing an agent? Okay, but now if you want to use Fetch as a polyfill for the browser. You are. You need to have also have a global agent sitting somewhere, and blah blah blah, and you can actually end up in the same problem that you have a global agent, and you might not really want to even have that in the first place, because it's um, it goes into it goes into problems on its own. Okay. Now, count that you know complex agent model. You need to have two agents if you're wanting to do HTTP and HTTPS. You have two agents. And it gets even more one round of complicated complication, and then it's a no, it's tied to HTTP one, and this is problematic because you know we have HTTP two, we are going to have HTTP three in the future, so we need a high level uh, uh, API for. Like this thing is going to is getting legacy and getting old very badly. And this is my feeling. Okay. Does it make hmm? is there any objection or any point to does somebody disagree? Does somebody really like HTTP.request is really passionate about it? Please speak now. Okay, fine. Um yeah, it's old. Um so this is the HTTP request. I would like to, to have uh, Miles coming up. Would you, would you like to speak for like two minutes uh, about why, uh, why we need fetch in, in, in Node? Yeah, sure. And uh, as a thing, like, because I've just listed a bunch of very negative things, so I want somebody that really wants fetch in Node to, to actually articulate that. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the only bad boys. Okay? It's good. Um, no, but I mean, Fetch is an API. I've always found it to be like a rather intuitive API for working with. Um, I think within the ecosystem, it's become uh, a fairly idiomatic way of writing code. When I sit down and I want to make, you know, like some sort of request to get some sort of resource over the wire, um, I reach for Node Fetch almost right away. Um, and if we want to write code that can, you know, be platform independent. Um, it's really, to me, like I will go and write something. It's like if not fetch, then require node fetch. And I, I think that especially as we move towards ESM, we're like doing that kind of dynamic polyfilling. Uh, top level way will make it a little easier, but it's still not necessarily something that we're like jumping up in joy about like a pattern to be following. So it'd be really great to not have to polyfill it in the same way. And it would be, you know, good to have shared. Uh, and I, I think that like having that one interface for kind of all the major JavaScript platforms will significantly simplify a lot of code that people are writing. Um, hello. Hello. So um, it, 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 there, there, there have been a number of uh, exercises to implement fetch. There is a node fetch uh, uh, library out there. Um, I've gone through and actually implemented fetch. And I'm going to put quotes around that for Node Core. It didn't implement the security. It didn't implement the caching. It didn't, you know, implement WebWG streams. Um, in fact, it didn't implement most of what was on that list. So I didn't throw it out there because it wasn't actually fetch. It had the name of the function. It was the fetch was the name of the function, and it returned promises the way that fetch API works. So what's there? The challenge is we can only get part of the way there right now. Even if we did make changes to uh, um, you know, HTTP request, right, you know, it would take a significant amount of work to do. And then HTTP 2, we specifically did not do a compatibility API on the client side because this has just been an open problem, right? We didn't want to duplicate the same problems with uh, HTTP. Yeah, there is also the problem that the, our current agent model 
It's based on the concept of a TCP socket or a TLS connection. So each request gets assigned a socket or a connection. And in a multiplex model of HTTP2 or HTTP3, that makes absolutely zero sense. Yeah, HTTP3 HTTP comes, it's quick based, which is UDP based, um, which is you're going to use an entirely different model that nothing within that core right now uh, applies to. So, so that is uh, uh, more or less uh, the, the, the problem. Like, I, I just wanted to state the problem. And, you know, because the question mark, like, shipping this is going to be a journey. Like, it's not going to, to be, uh, it's, it's, it's important that we need, we ship something. We, so, it's, we have two things. We have two requirements, okay? We need a better HTTP client for Node, shipped within Node itself. And we need to support, we will need to support fetch, some sort of fetch-like thing. Uh, for uh, for the web and compatibility reason. By the way, not fetches are meeting. So uh, like, uh, we also have promise APIs for a bunch of things in core, and we don't have a promise API for HTTP request anyway. So we might as well try to make it as close to the web API as we can. Right. Yes. So um, I just wanted to. So I, I'm just framing the. Uh, I, I just wanted to frame the, so the, the first goal of the session was framing the problem, okay? I, I don't want to, um, I have some ideas, okay? And, uh, yeah, James? Oh, yeah, so, okay, yeah, that is, that is actually quite nice. So, um, there is, so, uh, the, one of the problems for API-wise is what would be streams, okay? Now, um, at the beginning, there were some thoughts of, and some, you know, very bad blood uh, being spilled, whatever. And uh, about this, um, there is, uh, I am of the opinion that because of the sheer amount of number of downloads and usage of node streams, we will never be able to replace node streams with what would be streams. Okay, and this is the like we need to live with that mess that is not streams forever. Okay, and, yeah, it's, it's uh, we we can't remove them. Okay, it's not that we cannot add anything. We we cannot remove. We cannot deprecate those. Okay, like um, for if you don't know the user land implementation of node streams, which is readable dash streams, is the fourth most downloaded module on NPM. Okay, just so that you know that you are aware. So it's the ecosystem relies on that thing to keep being there and working. It's in very, very, some very deep dependency chain. I broke Yarn twice by doing minor releases there. So, you know, just so that you know, it's, it's, it's in some very, it's everywhere. Okay, uh, NPM uses it, for example, ships it in, NPM ships it in, uh, in their bundle and so on. Um, so we need to some interrupt, okay? Uh, so my uh, my idea for for interrupt with this and open I'm open for for a lot of feedbacks is um, uh, using async iterators. So uh, essentially passing through language level constructs that they both support with the same semantics, essentially, uh, to actually be able to process, uh, to, to move this data around. And now, this is not, is not empty of challenges, but it's, it's something, OK? Uh, this, is pos this should be possible as right now. So essentially, it's, it's not possible because we don't have an implementation of those around. But you know, we, uh, you can write a function that reads from a node stream and read from a what would you stream right now without, uh, with using the exact same code. Seems pretty cool, right? So this is, this is possible. Uh, uh, then uh, one other way for shipping those 
it's uh, uh, using it's with the pipeline function that we have introduced. So essentially, make sure that you can use pipeline node stream. What would you stream? And vice versa. Okay. So you can combine those things, and the logic for combining those things is built in into uh, into the runtime. So users don't have to, to deal with it. Is this hard? Yes. Okay. And then what else? <laughs> yeah. Why do you need to support uh, what WG stream in pipeline? Um, the reason is you want to read from a file and you want to pipe it and send it to fetch via post. How do you mix those? Are you recommending we implement a second, re implement the full uh, on all our APIs, create a Wakuji stream one and a node stream one? And what about the ecosystem? Wait a second, just give me, let me give you a moment. By uh, what WG stream do you mean a, uh, a what WG stream in Node.js then? Yeah. So uh, using async iterators as you described. Yeah. So how is that different from just a, a async uh, iterable uh, object? Or something? It's what the same thing. It's async iterator. It is the same thing. It's, so it's, when it's you it's say async iterator, yeah, async iterable. Yes. What so What what WG stream there is async iterable then? Yes. Okay. There. Well, they, it's in the spec, so I don't know in the browser. But it's, it's and node streams are <laughs> async controls too. Right. So right now, if we want to get a stream from fetch, uh, we need to do uh, get reader that returns a stream, and then we need to do like uh, and get a sync iterator, like symbol of async iterator or for await. Maybe we can ask the fetch spec to add a method that just returns a, like in a sync iterator directly and not a whatever you stream. And then when slash if they add that, we can. Uh, only expose that and not expose. Uh, maybe we can solve the. Spec. Yes, that is that is a possibility for for facts. So we might not have to implement those in, in Node and create like this is a question mark. Okay, I'm not. It's it's, it's a good idea. I, I I love I love the concept. Okay, so essentially providing a way for not having uh, to provide that. Big question how we do this, but it's, it's, still, it's still open. So, you know, uh, it's, uh, uh, there is this, okay. Um, uh, what else uh, can we talk about? It's, um, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, one of the other alternatives, so uh, Jeremiah, you know, Fish Rock has been working on this alternative low level streams yeah. API. One of the possible options here is that we just don't implement fetch, but we provide uh, a, a better mechanism, lower level mechanism for implementing fetch and use it on top in a way that is compliant with the standard. So somebody could implement what WG streams easier as a It doesn't solve the um, HP request API issue right now, but if we do make it easier to, uh, to uh, at least get the parts Right uh, to to implement it, then it gives us some uh, room for experimentation around what the API should be before we bring it yep. forward. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, the big question here for all of you um, that are here and listening on the live stream. Hey, hi. Um, it's uh, you know, it needs people to work on this. This is a complex, complex problem. Like with, it's, it's not simple in any form. So it needs a lot of people working. There is a lot of people complaining that fetch is not there, and not and not enough people saying, "Oh, how can we add this? How can we make this work? Okay, how do we address the compatibility with the rest of the ecosystem and work on this?" So um, uh, one option, if there is a bunch of people that is willing to to help and work on this is we can spin up uh, uh, a repository in the node organization of Open Node to some extent, uh, where we can you know, tinker with and experiment and then do a massive PR to Node when we are ready. Uh, 
Uh, this model has been used by HTTP2 and modules to ship. So it's a proven module for you know, managing very, very big and complex changes. We have a lot of ramifications. So we might want to do that. Uh, but as I, as I said, it requires people. So um, is there, are there volunteers? You know, that was kind of, but yeah, they, I know they, hey, we have one. OK, fine. <laughs> They're doing this. I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy now, OK? Um, so uh, it's, uh, uh, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting problem. And it's also, um, uh, I, I have a proposal, but I don't know if this makes any sense, OK? And I, I just want to float it to you, and you can you know, throw rocks at me, or tomatoes, or eggs, or beer products. Full bottles of wine. Hmm? Full bottles of wine. Full bottles of wine. No, that's unpack, open that and let's drink them. So um, I, uh, I have this idea uh, of, an, uh, of these, so that some of the problems of, of Fetch and the way Node works and the way we compose Node.js applications in, in the process in, in real life is that Node.js, having it as a global, with a global connection pool and so on, all those things that are global, are potentially problematic for Node itself. So um, I have this idea of uh, make Fetch API. OK? That is uh, a possibility. I'm just saying that we are not exposing Fetch as a thing. We are exposing a, um, a factory. And what you can put in here is, you know, I want the connections, the timeouts. I want HTTP 2, 3, 1, whatever, compatibility, OK? And, and so on and so forth, OK? So essentially, you can actually define what is, you can actually create your own, you can actually customize this and have it specific to your needs. You might also want to maybe whitelist or blacklist some uh, uh, URLs that you might want to fetch, OK? So I, I don't know. I have, this is more or less my take. Um, there is also the possibility that, we, as we said, we're not shipping no, no streams. Uh, well, what would you streams for a lot of reasons? That's a question mark. Um, all those things are there. All those problems are there. I'm just, you know, what we need, the, this is more of a call to action rather than a, a full, uh, <laughs> full blown proposal or section. It's just a, problems, a problem that we should be aware of and that it provides something better for the ecosystem. Um, there's also one more thing for a lot of folks. It's uh, the current HTTP model is very hard to mix, fact, it's very hard to intercept calls and so on made to external services. So there is a little bit of traceability in there just to complicate things a little bit further as a cross-cutting research. So, I don't know, I, I am more or less done. Uh, I'm early, so hey, I'm sorry. Um, I'm asking for questions and feedbacks here. So <clears throat> there are a lot of complex things in there. Currently, most of us are putting in like no fetch or letting our teams choose whichever one they want, like request promise, so they can use request with promises. Is it not also an option not to do this? And to, to use a module that's outside the because it's going to not bring it into core at all. Is that not an option? The use of node fetch has still all the issues of our current HTTP model. Yeah, but doing one outside of node, taking like taking over, maintaining. Wait a second. So rather than bring this straight into core, which is like a huge land, perhaps an alternative, like a middle ground, is to take a currently existing one and work on it, to bring in those other features on HTTP2, allow people to use it, and at some future point, bring it in. in. In order to do that, that would require significant changes to Node Core itself. Good. But yes, 
Uh, that, so essentially, you are essentially yes. But in order to ship that, we need to ship new APIs for Node Core for a lot of things that will be, need to be low level, and that will probably not be great. Is is the, the largest problem the, the, uh, the stream store WD streams problem? Uh, not necessarily. It is uh, the major problem is the HTTP dot agent model that we have. Essentially, that at least that's my current take. And if you look at how things are written down, we have an incoming message, an outgoing message. It's very, very weird. At least for me, like I couldn't. It took me so much time to figure out how things were moving around, and and so on. It also makes like certain edge cases about proxies. So if you want to use a proxy in Node, but make an HTTP request to a proxy, you need to use an ecosystem module that monkey patches some of the stuff on the on an agent and Okay, I, it's, it's a problem. Um, there is a question from um, Jeremiah. So I don't know if anyone's explored this at all, but are we sure that we aren't going to want a lower level HTTP2 and or HTTP3 quick whatever client? Or client high, high, high level or lower level? Lower level. So that, in a sense, so that some, something that would also then let node fetch be implemented on top of for, for those protocols in a more, let's say, compatible way, obviously, because currently they're kind of stuck with the yeah. client that we have, but. James, take that. Uh, the answer is yes, we're absolutely going to need them. Um, fetch as a higher level abstraction does not expose enough detail to allow you to actually make use of the specific features of HTTP 2 and HTTP 3. Uh, things like push streams, for instance. There's nothing there to, to, to do that. So we actually need a low level client in order to have a client side that, 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 that exposes those. For HTTP 3, um, we're actually going to have two clients. There's a quick protocol, and then there's HP3, which is an application on top of Quick. Uh, and that API, there'll actually be just a, a, a raw, low-level Quick client uh, there in HP3 API will be on a layer on top of it. So there's there's multiple layers of clients there, multiple levels of detail, and different features that need to be exposed to each layer. I'm a little bit confused then, again, the need for fetch because I think um, those protocols were kind of listed as a reason that we would want this, um, even though we will, it seems inevitably look at lower level clients anyways. Um, the, there are a couple of reasons. Uh, the first one is um, it's num probably close to number one complaint on, from the folks on the web platform. So, um, and currently using node fetch as a certain series of, you know, compatibility issues around, as I said, connection pooling. By default, it has no connection pooling, which means that if you're writing a React app, uh, server-side render React application or view or whatever, and you're using fetch, uh, it may, and from the global object, it means that you are actually uh, creating a TCP, a, a, a TCP socket every time you make a request. And if that's an HTTPS connection, you're actually instantiating a new TLS context every single time you're making a connection, which means that you're going to get very bad performance out of your mode app. So that, those are reasons, okay? I'm not sure if they're enough for you, but that's, um, that, that's one of the first questions that a lot of people ask. Can node fetch do connection pooling itself? You need, no, you need to pass in an agent. So you basically need to move around an HTTP agent or set a global HTTP agent on node core, causing all sorts of those problems. Um, are you? You got any more questions, Jeremiah? No, I'm just flagging. I'm just exploring this area, okay, and looking for people that want to to deal with this and try to to sort it out. 
in somehow in some form in a way that is interoperable, decently interoperable with the web. So I, you know, it's a thing, it's a problem that we need to solve if we want to stay relevant so somehow. Um, Miles, I don't know where Miles is, but he's out. Hi, Miles. <laughs> um, uh, Miles, you have done some work on uh, in embed, trying to embed node fashion node. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what road roadblocks did you face, and you know, uh, what are the main main point problems and points? Oh hi. So I have a, a branch, and uh, nothing works. But I have like one or two commits, and basically I vendored node fetch into the depths folder, and I brought the web platform tests because uh, I don't know if Troy is in here. Oh, Troy did some like really awesome work with documenting and automating the process of vendoring in web platform tests. So there's a whole bunch of tests for fetch. Um, so I got the web platform tests set up and then um, I was trying to wire up node fetch uh, and it was like super naive just like instantiating it as like putting it into the global and then putting it into the module cache. Um, but for some reason the way I was wiring it up it wasn't actually available on the global and it wasn't getting required and then it was 3 a.m. and then I was like screw this and I shut my laptop and then I just have not motivated myself to ever open it again so I've mostly been on offline since um, but yeah I, I guess like the, the biggest blocker there was that last little bit of like actually how to wire it up and expose it there was just something I was doing wrong um, I bet you if we sat down and looked at it for two seconds Joy or Anna or someone who's more familiar with some of the internals of Node would probably be like, you just need to do this one thing. And then we would have like that embedded Node fetch at least working experimentally. So I th I'm pretty sure I have that uh, branch on my computer. I could just go rebase it and then someone can try to get it working and we could just play with that. Anyway, um, I don't know if you expected something different from this session or anything. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, yeah, Oh, I will explain in my talk on the second day about when, like, where you should add something to go. So, um, yeah, that may be useful. Also, like, I think for testing fetch in Node, we need to, like, have a server because uh, web platform tests in the web platform test, um, they have this kind of server set up. Uh, if you like actually running it, um, it, it will like start a server so that you can test certain APIs like fetch against that server in, instead of you know just testing the interface without actually testing functionality. I think we would need a little bit more like um, hooking up to do in order to actually run the tests. Yeah. Uh, any? Yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, for all of you that you don't know, there is this the web platform tests. So the tests from the, the the web platform that we are pulling in into Node, and we run them as part of we can run them as part of our testing suite. So uh, we can if we write our own write our own tests, we can spin up a server. Okay, that's what our how we test our current HTTP thingy. But with WPT, we would need to, to do it in some other ways. Is that, I understand yes. your point correctly? Yes. Okay. We need to employ some kind of, there's also some kind of, you know, redirect, and uh, we also need to, in, like, eliminate. So, uh, in the web patterns have for fetch, there are a large chunk of tests dedicated to things like CORS and, you know, caching. Like, we would, like, e if we want to like implement a minimum, minimum set of functionality in fetch, we would have to like exclude all of those. Yeah, it's actually. Yeah, it's an important point. Uh, if if in our implementation of fetch, for instance, if it's not <coughs> over, right, if we're not one hundred percent compliant with the with the fetch spec. 
are we, can we actually say we are implementing fetch? Uh, we've had some arguments with, within Nocore around um, the platform API compatibility, um, that it either has to work the same, exact same way that it is in the browser, or it's not, you know, or, or, or we're doing something wrong. We've had the kind of, these are kind of arguments around the promises and some other things. Uh, so one of my concerns is if we do implement run on sort of implementing fetch, we provide the API, but we make modifications to it so that it works better in Node, right? What kind of issues are we going to run into like with the differences that are in the browser? So to avoid that, um, we really should be looking at it going back to the what WG and trying to, to propose some changes nice. such as making make fetch or whatever API here part of the standards. So I, that's my kid. So there's like one or two extra commits on this branch that I don't remember writing. And uh, it looks like it might work. What I did is, um, it's compiling right now. Um, do we still have the, yeah, let's, I'll show you what I did, it's bad. Actually, before I do that, it's quickly. Sorry, I just, uh, quick tip, if you're using computers and you're putting it on a projector and that projector's on a stream and you don't want people to see what you're doing, close all your messaging uh, clients first. <laughs> There's a setting where when you have a second, uh, Display attach. There's a way to do that automatically. I, I think so. Let's talk. Is it There's the Mac app called Muscle that does this. Okay. Um, so I made a new um, experimental fetch flag, which um, if you ever want to make a flag in Node, essentially you want. You have node options.cc and node options.h. This used to be not nearly as nice. And I think, Roy, did you do a lot of the refactoring for this? Uh, for, for the node options like this stuff? Um, those are the supervised refactorings that Okay. Well, thank you. It's so much nicer. It used to just all be in like node.c, <laughs> if I recall correctly. Mike, can you show the share it on Zoom? Uh, yes. Second. Nope. Nope. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh yeah, this is a cool article I was reading. And why it's a little love for patent grants in the MIT license. That's a fun article. Okay, so GitHub node. Summit. Ugh, we haven't even hit the eight yet. This is going to take a while. Um, okay. So here's the bad code I wrote. Um, you make an add option. The name of the option, that's the like variable. You declare the variable here. So experimental fetch false by default. Then inside of HTTP here, you can just from internal options, you can call get option value and then get option value of like the option itself will then give you the flag, like the flag that you pass. So that's kind of how you make flags in Node now. Which is fairly straightforward. Um, uh, so you can see cods fetch equals require internal fetch, and internal fetch just has module that exports equals require internal dot depths dot node fat fetch. And if we go here to um, would be lib internal. Maybe that's what I did wrong. Just be in depths. So maybe that's what I. 
Oh, I think, does an internal slash depths then like go to the depths folder? Yes. Yeah, so that just works. I'd have to look up why it just works. Uh, uh, are you looking for why lib fetch is not showing up? Like, is not happening? We'll see in a second. I don't even remember writing this, so. <laughs> Um, but then essentially all we do is like we check the option value. If it's true, then we require internal fetch, which in turn then requires depth node fetch. Um, and then it just defines the property. I defined it on HTTP. So this was one way that I thought we could fix some of the problems of at least people, A, not being happy that it's called fetch because it would be HTTP.fetch. So it would be part of our HTTP API. It wouldn't be on the global, and it's just rendering node fetch. Um, my plan for this, and I do this sometimes, is write something really, really bad that you know won't ship, but it's some code, and then open a PR, and then people will often then come in and swoop in and nerd snipe you. And That's called hacking. <laughs> <laughs> so this is still building. We're at the beginning of the eight. So this is going to take a little while before we can actually test it. I think we have, what is going on here? Um, I think we have some time though. Oh, the projector just turned off. Oh, uh, the HDMI is sketchy. So um, we're at four o'clock. Is it break time anyways right now? So maybe we can take a break. And by the time the break is done, maybe this will be done compiling. So thank you for looking at my hat. You can go now. <laughs>